how would you or what would you say you've observed with the manner in which politicians have uh, uh, composed uh, comported themselves so I think I mean Nigeria's on a democratic journey um, but it's really commendable that you've stuck with it since 1999 and as you mentioned earlier that can't be said for all countries in this region where we've seen quite a lot of democratic backsliding with coups with presidents refusing to step down after their term there's never been any question of that in Nigeria the two times four years term is, has been stuck to um, but President Buhari himself has said he feels most his most important legacy is a credible and peaceful election so I think that's all very, very positive. Um, that's not to say there aren't challenges. Each election we hope to see some improvements. What would be very worrying would be to see backsliding on that democratic journey. But I am confident, and I think the people of Nigeria are confident, certainly many of the youth who I've spoken to feel much more confident this time that their vote will count because it's protected through the, the BVAS, the electronic transmission of votes, and because there's, there's more choice for them. You know, there's candidates they feel they can relate to. So um, nothing's perfect. No democracy in the world is perfect. In the UK, we, we have challenges, we <laughs> learn. Um, but th Nigeria is on that journey, on a progressive journey, and the world is indeed watching this yeah. election. What do you think would be the impact of a much younger voters? I mean, you said you have observed that there are more enthusiasm between the younger mm -hmm. demography. W what do you think could be the impact or the implication of that? Well, I think the message to the youth is um, if you actually go and turn out to vote, you know, 50% of this population is under 18. Um, there are at least 9.5 million new registered voters, and I think 75% of them are in that 18 to 35 bracket. Um, you could potentially change the outcome of this election. I'm not assuming who they're going to vote for, but the point is their vote will count. So um, there's a few days to go, so it, it's been encouraging. People have registered, picking up their cards, but of course, the the only poll that counts is on the day, so people do need to go out, and that will determine who the winner will be, because the winner will determine on who actually votes on the day. So I would urge them all to, to complete their, their journey and go out and vote, and don't feel intimidated. It's really important that feel, people feel they can vote peacefully. What do you think about the quality of some of the candidates, the top ones? Um, well, we've engaged with all the, the, the big four, as you might say, but I've met some of the smaller parties as well. We know them well, and uh, like Channels TV, we don't have a, we're not backing any particular yeah. candidate. Um, we can work with anybody who wins this election because that will be the choice of the people of Nigeria. I think whoever comes in is going to have an, an enormous set of challenges on the economy, on security. So what we've urged all of the uh, presidential aspirants to do is to take bold, early action on those, particularly on the economy, because if the economy functions, the security environment will also improve, because much of the insecurity I think we see is related to joblessness, livelihoods, young men in particular, not having an alternative viable livelihood. So the two are very much linked. So we'll, we, on the day when we see who comes out, assuming there's not a runoff, um, we stand ready to work with whoever comes through. So I'm, much, I'm, I'm speaking in the political and uh, the voting sense. Um, and the, what comes out of such a decision mm -hmm. and how much people understand that mm -hmm. the decision they make in an election right. will impact not only the, on the economy, it will impact on their livelihood generally. And, uh, and a lot of Nigerians who are watching you tonight, and the reason why I asked the earlier question is perhaps the decision they will be making mm -hmm. on Saturday mm -hmm. uh, will affect their lives in so many ways. And that's why I was asking mm -hmm. for the lesson that Nigerians could learn also in making a dramatic well, or decision. a very critical yeah. decision. Well, I think the, the, I mean, a referendum is very different, obviously, yeah, from, a, from yeah. an election, because it's about one absolutely. issue, and, and you one focus issue. on And you issue. have to make a decision But that. The, yeah. the thing that's similar, obviously, is that you, you should go into an, an election or a referendum doing your homework and your research and thinking about, you know, is, you know, does Brexit, how will it affect me personally, my family? Um, and it was a complicated issue. And some people think that shouldn't go to a referendum because it's almost too complicated. But in an election, all the key parties have published their manifestos. I've seen them. What's been quite striking here, actually, is how similar 
they are. They're, I didn't see huge policy differences amongst the big four. Mm. They've all told us they understand the importance of, um, you know, taking those difficult policy decisions. But there are differences. And, um, you know, candidates come with different perspectives. And it's clear the youth have mobilized particularly around one candidate. Um, but in terms of policy, I didn't see a huge set of differences. But the most important thing is people do their research. They think about who, who overall, which candidate reflects their interest most, who will do the best for them in the future Nigeria mm -hmm. and they make their choice and then uh, but they accept the result that's the most important yeah. thing and the one thing we do need to worry about in Nigeria because the sort of flip side of a very close election where there's a lot of engagement is there's a, there's a lot at stake mm -hmm. there's no predetermined outcome in this election yeah. that's yeah. democracy how are you helping Nigeria in this election so we've we've been working with Nigeria for many many years over 20 years to help you put in place the, the framework for this democracy so with INEC we We've worked, um, for example, most recently on the Electoral Act. It was um, supporting the Electoral Act, which INEC will benefit from, um, helping them do the training of their various um, people who will go out on the ground. And we support civil society to have a voice, a loud voice, in terms of holding government to account, passing of the Electoral Act. On the day, we'll support the various situation rooms, including Yaga, the Not Too Young to Run campaign. We support their parallel vote tabulation. So essentially, we support INEC, we've supported the judicial process, and we've supported civil society. Mm. Interesting. You've been putting some pressure, not this time alone, uh, in several elections. And the kind of warning um, that the British government and the, the US government, as uh, the signal they are, they are, they, they are they're sending, uh, sometimes um, have its own effect. Um, this time around, you have a position, just like the, your U.S. Uh, counterpart, mm -hmm. about those who rig elections. Uh, what are those specific decisions you, you have made in respect of those who you think uh, want to manipulate the process or want to rig the 2023 election? So we, we've just had a statement put out by our minister, Andrew Mitchell, who's the Development and African Minister. I've got it in front of me. And basically, in short, where, where the UK is aware of attempts to subvert the democratic process, we are prepared to take action against those who engage in or incite electoral violence or indeed any other anti-democratic behaviour. And the sanction, we have two sort of tools in our toolbox to sanction. One is a visa ban. Um, we can refuse a visa to travel to the UK for people who are undermining the democratic process. Or for more serious um, uh, behaviours, we have um, sanctions under our human rights sanctions regime. So we're, w we're watching closely. This is not targeted at any particular political party, any individual. Um, it can be applied to anyone. You mentioned earlier some hate speak, you know, um, that unfortunately is very live in this Nigeria debate in the run up to the election. And hate speak can incite violence and that mm -hmm. can be extremely dangerous. So we're watching closely. Um, we can never reveal who's been subject to a visa ban for, you know, for data protection reasons. Um, but I can confirm we have used this tool and alongside our US counterparts are prepared to use it again. It's interesting, though, and uh, I mean, you're not worried about those who believe, I mean, who, who, those who oppose and think that, I mean, our colonial masters are bad at, back at it again. You don't think that people have that kind of feeling? No, I, I don't think this is interference. I think most people I've spoken to welcome this because everyone has a stake in a, in a peaceful, credible election, most of all the people of Nigeria. So it's undermining everyone's right to vote peacefully, to express their, their preferences. So we are just playing our part in supporting Nigeria's democratic journey. But this is not interference. This is not our election. It's your election. What are your biggest fears? Uh, about this election from what you have observed? So I think the, um, there is a, a worry around insecurity and violence. So the, in this pre-election period, the number of pre-election incidents is higher than the last election. There's obviously the, the day of the election itself and, and following the presidential, the gubernatorial, where we hope people can go out to vote peacefully. Um, but perhaps most worrying is the post-election period, where we have seen in the past in Nigeria um, that there's been quite intense post-election violence. So in order to avoid that, what we're urging the, the heads of the political parties to do is to ensure that their supporters um, go out and vote, of course, but as I said, accept the result. And if they feel they want to challenge anything, to do so through the courts, through the judicial process, to keep things calm, 
um, during what is going to be a, a very close, uh, closely run election. There's a lot at stake. So that's, I guess, one of my, my fears and worries. But assuming we can get through that, I think the, the future looks very bright for Nigeria with the incoming presidential candidate, whoever it is, tackling those difficult challenges. And the UK, like most of the international community, wants Nigeria to succeed, and we're going to be coming in fully behind you. Oh, yeah. What would you say is the biggest lesson that, is, that, you've, that you think that this process has brought up in Nigeria? This is an election where you have major candidates of emerge in different parts of the country and is a big departure from what we have had in the past. I think it is, it's that rise of the youth who recognize the, the um, a political awakening, you know, who've recognized and probably linked partly to the NSARS movement has found a, a direction in this election to channel that energy, that um, desire for their voice to be heard in Nigeria. Nigeria is a young country, but it's still ruled by relatively elderly people. Mm -hmm. And I think that voice has now been found and that's going to be so important and a real positive. And the, the elderly who we all respect and we're all becoming older, um, need to allow space for the youth to come through. And I would also mention um, importance of women, and that is something, sadly, Nigeria is backsliding on. Nigerian women are successful in all walks of life. Just last week, we were celebrating through International Women's Day Gala Award that the female ambassadors here in Nigeria have put together. Amazing, successful women in the media, in law, in everything, but not in politics, because it's just too difficult. Um, you know, the, the people who secured these positions in the National Assembly Mostly men do not want women to come through, sadly. There are exceptions. There are some really good he-for-she's. But um, there's only one female gubernatorial candidate. It's just not good enough. So the big lesson for Nigeria as well is, like, embrace this inclusion, embrace the youth, embrace women, and that's where Nigeria really will succeed. For the person who becomes the winner of this election, what message do you have for such a person? Be bold. Take those tough decisions and take them early. Have courage and we'll come in behind you. Mm, interesting. And uh, perhaps one thing that is here is the message of the fact that whoever becomes Nigeria's next president may not have the magic wand to erase all of the problems. But what would you say, um, you've been around for, for some time in this country and as a diplomat, you definitely have a lot of information uh, what would you say the next president should focus on as a priority? Well, I think it's got to be the economy, number one, um, because that's what's holding Nigeria back. And as I mentioned, I think the economy failing is also causing a lot of the insecurity, not all of the insecurity, but a large part of it. So there are you know, two or three key decisions an incoming president has to take. Number one is to remove the fuel subsidy, which is draining the fiscus, but to do it in a way that protects poor people. Secondly, to, to tackle the multiple exchange rates, you know, businesses are just will not invest in this country if they can't secure their foreign exchange. And three, raise taxes. You have one of the lowest tax ratios in, in, the, in the modern world. Um, without raising revenue, you can't invest in public services, and in public services, infrastructure, education is key to the future. Um, but the other point I just wanted to emphasize again is whoever comes in, build a, a strong, inclusive team with young people, with women in your team at the top table. Bring all that talent together and reach out to other political parties. A strong, inclusive team to help you and support you as a leader in what's going to be a pretty enormous set of challenges.